actually, I will uh, I would like to start this uh, webinar uh, with a very warm welcome and uh, good morning to LA and uh, good afternoon to to the Danish participants. Actually, uh, we have been uh, delighted to uh, to attend this uh, webinar uh, because we have so uh, marvelous speakers uh, for the today event. And actually, the theme today is uh, leading the sustainability revolution in the US, uh, particularly in Los Angeles. And I'll just have to mention that uh, this uh, event is going to be recorded and will be uh, uh, distributed afterwards to you all. Actually, we have a, a, a slight uh, tight program. We have just an hour to, uh, to, uh, to, to get it running. And uh, actually, uh, we are uh, very uh, glad that uh, so much uh, much uh, attendees are, are joining. So, uh, with this word, I would like to uh, to welcome you all. And uh, the presenters, I will uh, just ask to, uh, to uh, take to control, take control of, the of the presentation. presentation. And uh, I think there's uh, some echo in. Uh, yeah, nice, Nina. If uh, you can uh, just uh, uh, listen to, to my uh, startup remarks here. Actually, uh, for, for all you to know that this uh, DKLA uh, partnership is actually a, a various of uh, uh, actors. And uh, as you can see here, we have a, a lot of supporters to, to make this uh, uh, attempt to get more collaboration with Los Angeles and the, the US. So this, these uh, companies and uh, institution actually is uh, the one we are bringing on to this goal and uh, and, and this background that uh, what our uh, partnership is actually a public-private partnership and uh, we are supported with the Danish Energy Agency. Our mission is to uh, connect the technology, the solution and know-how culture and people companies from Denmark with lots of uh, uh, actors, uh, uh, participants in, in the Los Angeles way. And uh, actually, we are looking to Los Angeles because you have the most ambitious sustainability agenda in the US. And uh, we, we really need to, to, to make some more uh, uh, dialogue about that because I think we can help each other in a collaboration. But actually, for uh, Danish people to understand, uh, the US market is actually a uh, in our uh, eyes, uh, uh, one big market, but actually it's uh, a rather big market when we are uh, uh, is making uh, some uh, uh, similar, uh, yeah, in Danish uh, uh, way, uh, uh, a very one big market, but just uh, with some uh, lots of economics that uh, actually have a, a lot of trends. So this is the introduction. We need to get some dialogue. And actually, I would like you all to, uh, if you have a comment or a question, just raise your hand uh, by the, the, the icon in, in the top. And I will, I will try to, uh, to, to get you uh, to, uh, to get in uh, and, and speak. Or if you don't want to speak, just uh, write uh, your question or the, your comment in the, the chat function. So actually. I would like to uh, welcome you, Nina Hatchkan. I hope I pronounced it uh, uh, correct. And actually, I hope you will uh, just uh, take us through uh, this uh, uh, city of Los Angeles international affairs and uh, take us uh, to this uh, sustainable revolution in the US. So uh, your, the word is yours, Nina. Thank you. Well, good morning to all my colleagues in Los Angeles. Uh, we have a beautiful day here in LA. Good evening to all of you joining from Denmark. Um, having just finished all episodes of Borgen, I'm feeling particularly close uh, to your country and feel like I know it very well, even though I don't. Uh, but thank you for the warm uh, welcome and uh, an introduction. Thank you to Thomas Reeves, our resident expert in LA on all things related to Denmark. He's played really a critical role in uh, in this partnership and on developing this program. Um, so as Deputy Mayor of International Affairs for Los Angeles and on behalf of Mayor Eric Garcetti, I um, am very happy to be joining this. I'm thrilled that so many of you are interested in LA 
And not just for what we are most well known for, movies and entertainment, but for what Los Angeles is moving toward and building right now, the future of LA as a global hub of sustainability and a showcase for climate solutions. In 2019, Mayor Garcetti released LA's Green New Deal, which was an ambitious, what we call green print uh, for a carbon neutral city. Our Green New Deal lays out a path to a healthier city, free from environmental degradation, a path toward vibrant green economy with more green jobs and an equitable and just society. The Green New Deal is an aggressive plan, but it is driven by data and it's defined by action to reach what we call the five zeros, a zero carbon grid, zero carbon transportation, zero waste, zero wasted water, which is important in our uh, drought stricken area and zero carbon buildings. These are not just uh, aspirational words. We are implementing these solutions every day. And so all of these areas, uh, energy, mobility, water, waste, buildings, the targets of the Green New Deal are market drivers for, and commercial opportunities for innovative companies around the world who are up to the challenge, companies uh, like you. So an important focus of the Green New Deal is our commitment to securing a healthy environment in every neighborhood. This means a focus on low income neighborhoods and communities of color that have been most affected for decades and continue to be at most risk to the effects of climate change. So that's why we aren't just planning a COVID recovery, we're planning a green and just recovery. Both these concepts, the Green New Deal and a green and just recovery are also priorities for Mayor Garcetti in his role as chair of the C40, a coalition of 97 global megacities that have adopted science-based targets and implemented bold programs to keep global warming well below 1.5 degrees Celsius. More and more national governments are looking to cities for real world applications of climate solutions and strategies. And we are regularly in touch with the White House and Secretary Kerry in his role as the climate, climate envoy for the United States. As C40 chair, Mayor Garcetti is leading a UN effort also to recruit at least 1,000 cities, global cities, to bring to COP um, to demonstrate the power of climate ambition uh, at the local level. This is an effort known as the Cities Race to Zero, and we are well on our way to getting to those 1,000 cities. Um, with the Biden-Harris administration committed to addressing the climate emergency, there's really no better time to enter the U.S. market and there's no better entry point than Los Angeles. LA is an ideal proving ground for climate solutions. As you'll hear from other speakers today, Los Angeles has a deep talent pool. We graduate more engineers than any other county in the United States. We have an entrepreneurial ecosystem with a very collaborative spirit, and we are very open to global partnerships. We are in fact a very global city. Nearly 40% of our population is foreign born. We have some of the largest diaspora communities anywhere in the world. Over 200 languages are spoken here in our schools, and we have the third largest diplomatic consular corps in the world. Over the next decade, we will be very much on the global stage with our mayor as a chair of C40 and a leading champion for climate action. We will also be showcasing sustainable solutions as we host some of some significant global events, the Super Bowl in 2022, the FIFA World Cup we hope and expect in 2026, and the Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2028, which will be the most sustainable games ever, including because we are not building any new uh, facilities. We have a lot to look forward to. So as we turn the corner on COVID-19 and we work toward a green and just recovery, I really hope to welcome you to Los Angeles in person and invite you to join us and be part of the sustainability movement in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nina. Uh, that's just nice hearing. But what is uh, can you uh, can can you help us with uh, understanding what, what why is uh, it so easy to uh, other cultures to to join in LA? Uh, could you uh, set some uh, example on that? Uh, well, we're working with international companies every day um, on uh, on climate related solutions. We've um, we have Japanese companies that are. Uh, doing testing of zero uh, zero carbon mobility solutions in our port, um, and we on a regular basis, um, uh, well, in our airport as well, we have uh, international companies that are doing the work in retrofitting our 
We, LAX is the third busiest airport in the world, or pre-pandemic anyway, um, and is going through a $15 billion renovation. And we have a consortium of international companies working on that work as well. Um, and Christine will go, I think, into more detail. Um, but we have, uh, I think, over 80 companies, 80 countries' companies uh, represented in in Los Angeles. So we already, um, you know, are used. Oops, we are already used to uh, to working collaboratively with with foreign companies here, and we we welcome you. Oh, thank you. Yes, nice, Nina. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, and I can see there are no questions. So if you have some questions afterwards, I think you are, you will stay on the webinar, Anina, uh, to the end. Uh, yeah, nice. So actually, we would like to go to the to the ne next speaker. Uh, it's uh, Christine Peterson from uh, the uh, inter uh, the director of international trade and investment of City of Los Angeles. And uh, I'll just give you the word and uh, just uh, turn the slide to the next page. And uh, this uh, nice pe uh, girl, I will call you girl, Nina, uh, is just like this. And now I'll give the word to, to you, Christine Peterson. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I do have some slides that I can share. I think, yeah. do I just press take control? Yeah. OK, this is new for me because uh, we usually yeah. Okay. have um we're usually using zoom but so i hope you have got the yeah okay yeah and then hmm. i just want to add that if you are taking control you are taking control over this presentation so you okay. have to share a new one Ah, okay. Thank you, Matthias. Okay. Well, I may not be able to figure this out <laughs> in real time. Maybe you could, uh, if you could uh, just mail it to, to, to Matthias and I, uh, so we could share it afterwards. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you could do your presentation without the slides. Yes, that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll start by going into a little bit more detail on what LA's Green New Deal is that Nina mentioned, um, going into some of those five zeros, as well as some examples of international companies that are partnering on uh, sustainable solutions here in Los Angeles, and um, some more about the, the reasons why international companies are coming here and the resources that are, that are available. So um, turning to LA's Green New Deal that was released in 2019, uh, this is actually an update to the city's sustainability plan that was released in 2015. And um, it really is an expanded vision of that plan. It's an action plan that tackles the climate emergency with accelerated targets and even more aggressive goals. Um, it's compatible with the Paris Accord and accelerates emission reduction to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, it's also an invitation really to, to partner with businesses, nonprofits, and the international community. A couple of um, key principles of the Green New Deal, uh, uh, many of you may be familiar that with the New Deal uh, from FDR, it, his response to the Great Depression was this series of uh, programs, public works programs, and that's really where the name Green New Deal comes from because it's not just one piece of legislation or one program, but a series of public works projects um, that is also a, a driver for the economy. And it's also about delivering environmental justice. So, so both jobs and justice um, are important policy goals of our Green New Deal. As Nina mentioned, there are five zeros to the Green New Deal. There's our zero carbon grid, where we're reaching 80% renewable energy by 2036. 
and 100% by 2045. Um, on that point, I'll just add that recently, Los Angeles conduct uh, over several years actually, when with the support of the Department of Energy, conducted a study about all the different pathways that can get Los Angeles to a zero carbon grid. And they confirmed that it's very possible to do it by 2045 in the next 25 years, and possibly, probably even sooner. Um, so that was a really exciting um, development and all that data is available online. Our, our second zero of zero carbon buildings, we're looking for 100% net zero carbon uh, new buildings by 2030 and all buildings by 2050. Um, so with each of these targets, you can see that we have a near term goal as well as you know, the, the zero goal by 2050. On transportation, we're reaching 80% by uh, 2035. And zero waste, 95% uh, landfill diversion by 2035. Um, zero wasted water, uh, as Nina mentioned, we're aiming for 100% of our wastewater to be recycled by 2035. I wish you guys could see these slides. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm sad, sorry. but they can't afterwards. So yes, I'm, I'm just yes. uh, sorry. Yes, um, but t turning to a little bit more about um, the economy side, since you all, all are business folks, the economy side of the Green New Deal, we are, um, you know, it's an environmental plan, but it's also a, a jobs plan. So we're building this green economy because uh, one of our great strengths in Los Angeles is really our scale. Our grid is um, the scope and scale of the entire state of Colorado. So we have the ability to really drive the market. And in, in one um, example I'll share is at the Intermountain Power Plant in Utah. That's actually where um, we get a lot of our energy. It's the last coal power plant in our portfolio. The original plan was to move it to a natural gas, but um, we've pushed beyond that and it'll now be one of the first power plants in the nation to incorporate green hydrogen in, in large quantities and storing it in these salt domes um, miles wide beneath the earth. Uh, so that's a really exciting uh, development. And then also on that topic of scale, uh, the mayor through the U.S. Climate Mayor's Electric Vehicle Purchasing Collaborative uh, combined 245 public fleets to commit to purchasing over 4,000 electric vehicles. So that sends a really powerful market signal, really powerful demand signal to, to car manufacturers. And that collective purchasing is something um, that Los Angeles has um, led. We uh, ourselves have placed the largest purchase of electric buses in U.S. history, uh, 155, and uh, currently have one of the largest municipal fleets in the U.S. We are also um, focusing on public-private partnerships. We've had some innovative developments there with the creation of Urban Movement Labs. Um, it's a hub of transportation and innovation in L.A., it has a lot of great components, one of which is um, using neighborhoods to pilot and demonstrate mobility solutions in a real world environment. And, um, and, and so that we have had some international partners with that as well. And we're also leveraging as a big spender, um, the city is leveraging our the money that we spend. So um, in 2013, the LA Department of Water and Power introduced the first feed-in tariff program that pays solar developers a, a fixed favorable rate for the solar they deliver to the grid. Um, that feed-in tariff program is now the largest in the nation. We have been for, I believe, four years now, the number one solar city in the country with, uh, as measured by the number of PV panels that we have. And we also have the largest uh, solar energy and battery storage 
uh, facility. It's called Eland. It's out in Kern County, but it delivers um, solar energy at a, a really competitive rate to the Los Angeles ratepayers. Can you and, say something about Christine? Uh, how, yes. how 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 big part of the the, the total uh, energy uh, production uh, supports from uh, the solar power? For the city, I'd have to look that up. I don't have that the at my fingertips, but uh, it's okay. It's it is a big part, and it's been growing. Um, we also have we also get some of our renewable energy from wind from a wind farm out in New Mexico, um, and then of course the the what we call refer to the in basin solar uh, within the Los Angeles basin. Our renewables is forty percent right now of our. So, of our yeah. thank, thank you, Nina. Uh, that include that includes everything though. Yeah. 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 Um. And uh, Nina also mentioned the uh, Port of LA clean truck uh, demonstrations. The earlier, uh, well, late last year, the mayor released a clean truck uh, request for uh, proposals to expand the use of zero emissions technologies at the port, uh, which is the largest and busiest port in the Western Hemisphere to achieve our goal of um, all drayage trucks, heavy duty trucks at the port being zero emission by 2035. So we really call on the private sector for innovative ideas. So just a couple of um, quick examples of international companies in LA. Um, we partnered with a French subsidiary of the Bolloré Group on a electric car pilot program, car sharing program. It's called Blue LA and it was targeted to disadvantaged neighborhoods. Started back in 2017 and grew every year and was acquired um, last year uh, in 2020 by, uh, by Blink. We've also, um, it's interesting, I'll, I'll mention that B, we have, um, I mentioned our electric buses, which is uh, the largest order for electric buses in U.S. history. Those Many of those buses are manufactured by a Chinese company, BYD. Um, manufacturing is done um, in Los Angeles County, and they have their North American headquarters in L.A. And I think it's pretty telling that um, once an international company is in L.A., Angelino is really accept them as Angelinos. So people have told me that, that BOID is not a Chinese company. It's an LA company because they're here. Um, but that's, I think, a, a, just a testament to how welcoming the, the community is and Thank the you. city is. And Christina, I, I just have a question from uh, uh, a hand raised from Charlotte Newtoft. Uh, please, uh, Charlotte, will you pose your question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, good to meet you. Uh, Christine, could you uh, talk about what you are doing for sort of last mile delivery uh, and how you are re reducing the uh, the emissions on, on, on last mile delivery? That's a that's a good, really great question. Um, I know that's one of the focuses of our urban movement labs. And Mike Swords, who you'll hear from later, uh, he has been the, the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator has been partnering with Santa Monica on a zero emissions delivery zone. So I think that that's a that's another good example from the area. Nice. Yes. Uh, Just one other point that I can make, which is that a lot of Angelinos have solar on their rooftops. So that's another uh, another last mile solution. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So just uh, a couple of key points on um, entering the LA market, and you'll hear more from Stephen about this, I'm sure, but the the LA metropolitan area has a, has a GDP of over $1 trillion, making it the third largest metropolitan economy in the world with a, you know, an area 
covering about 18 million consumers. So we really are a market of our own. Um, if we were a country, we would be on the order of about 16, uh, 16th largest economy in the world. And because of that, I, I think there, you know, there, those opportunities are pretty apparent, but we also have a really great community and, and network of incubators and accelerators. You'll hear from one of them today. We have great programming, the Net Zero Conference um, every year in September and the Verde Exchange. Um, we have a really deep talent pool and we partner on workforce development. That's really important to us. Um, we have a lot of open data that um, companies can use to develop their market entry strategies. I'm happy to share that with you all. And then Los Angeles has also become a bigger hub for funding of startups. So we're seeing a lot more um, aggressive funding. And then finally, we have some incentives for companies that come to LA There's um, and to California. There's, of course, a research and development tax credits. And then there's also something called Cal Competes, which is a, a tax credit for new companies, new um, investments in California. And, and it's an application-based process, but they have um, millions of dollars to, to credit companies that are investing in California. And then we also have a revised, revamped, modernized uh, procurement platform where you can see um, opportunities and, and register to get updates on opportunities in um, all the different uh, city departments. Uh, it's worth noting that Los Angeles owns our utilities, the LA Department of Water and Power, um, the Port of Los Angeles, the um, LA World Airports, LAX. So uh, all those procurement opportunities at those proprietary departments and utilities, those are posted and, and open um, on our procurement platform. So that that's um, just a, a bit of an overview and I'm yeah, happy to you. answer any other questions yeah, people yeah. may have. And if uh, I'm ju just very sorry that we can't show you a presentation, but as I mentioned, we will uh, make it uh, uh, visual uh, afterwards uh, in our uh, follow-up mail. So, uh, is there any questions uh, further? Yeah, we have a question from Søren Heyman. Yes, hello, it's uh, Søren here. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, it's okay. loud and clear, Søren. In fact, I, I got lots of uh, questions, but I will I will uh, only come up with two here because otherwise, you know. Uh, Nina, you, you mentioned that the renewables was about 40%, I believe you said. Is, does that include biomass as well as uh, the utilization of wastewater for uh, energy production? Can you tell me anything about that? It does not include biomass as far as I no. know. Okay. Um, and in terms of, I actually don't know enough to tell you whether we, you know, I know we're, we're, we've been working very hard on capturing wastewater, but I do not have the specific statistics, um, uh, around that, but I know that we, um, you know, we've, we've made a lot of progress, but I don't know, I don't know enough to, to tell you the details. I don't know if Christine does. But it does not include biomass, I have no, to say. Not. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and. One more question. Is that okay, Kurt? Yeah, that's, uh, let's, uh, uh, the time is overrun uh, already, so let's <laughs> uh, keep on. Uh, also, you said something about uh, zero water loss. Your ambition was zero uh, water loss, with, uh, which I believe is uh, very ambitious. Uh, we are talking the, about the loss from the distribution systems. Um, I think we're mostly talking about storm uh, water drain off so that it doesn't like run into the ocean that we've captured it before. Okay. It into the ocean. Um, okay. The climate part. Okay. Yeah. Well, just that, you know, yeah, the cl right climatic rain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which we don't so, get very often. So we need to save every drop that we get. Do you, do you know what your water loss is from the distri uh, distribution systems that you can call it the non revenue water part? I don't know. I do know we just did a big project with uh, with one of the hospitals that because it's yep. 
situated slightly below the um, uh, sea level, it was having to pump out tons of water, you know, yes. uh, on a daily or yearly basis. And we have now captured that water. So I guess that's one of what's one answer to your question. I guess the answer is we're on it, but I don't know what the percentages are. Okay. It's fair. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Back to you, to Christine. I would like to thank you for your presentation. And uh, now we'll just have to make a, a short uh, switch because we have got some new slides from uh, you, Michael Schwartz. So I, I hope uh, everything works. Uh, but Matthias, would you like to? It's to already done. Uh, so you I'm have just, been uh, doing it behind my back. That's uh, nice. So I'll just uh, say thank you to you, Christine. Uh, I, we will really, really look forward to to make some more dialogue about all the possibilities and the collaborations. But uh, I'll hand uh, the stage over to uh, the Vice President of Government Affairs, Mike Schwartz, in international relations and uh, in Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator. Mike, are you ready to present? We yes, have some I am. problems. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Good morning. Uh, yeah, will you take control uh, of the presentation? Uh, how do I take control? Oh, I uh, see the button. Yeah, nice. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm just so glad. Okay, so uh, my name's Mike Swords. I'm the VP of Government Affairs at Lacey. Um, Lacey is a nonprofit incubator it was created by the city of Los Angeles back in 2011. Um, we were created to help build an inclusive green economy for the LA region. We do that in three ways, um, unlocking innovation, market transformation, and enhancing communities. We have three primary technology priority areas, transportation, clean energy, and smart and sustainable cities. Since we opened our doors, Lacey has served over 230 companies. We've um, helped our companies raise over $500 million in funding. Uh, we have, our companies have generated over $270 million in revenue. Uh, we've created over 2,100 jobs, both directly and indirectly. And we estimate that our overall economic impact for the LA region is uh, north now of uh, $470 million. Um, this slide highlights some of the programs that we've created to help support startups through our Unlocking Innovation Program. Uh, we have the Founders Business Accelerator, which is our impact-focused accelerator for small businesses. Uh, and as you'll see a little later, uh, this program is really useful this year during the COVID crisis to help small businesses pivot uh, to deal with uh, the new reality of um, you know, some of the, the stresses that were caused by the crisis. Um, we have the Innovators Program, which is a light touch program uh, for our clean energy companies. And this program is funded by the California Energy Commission. And then we have our flagship incubation program, which is a very hands-on program where we take in two cohorts a year and we provide them with coaching and mentoring and advice. We provide them with access to our funding partners. We provide them with access to some of our institutional partners. Um, and uh, we also provide them with access to some of the professional service providers that uh, Lazy has as part of our ecosystem. And then there's the market access program, which helps uh, to create large scale pilot programs for scaling some of the technology that is being created by our startups. Uh, so I won't go through all of these companies, but I just wanted to give you a sense of the types of companies that we have had in our portfolio and who some of our alumni are. And I'll go through some of our success stories in, uh, in the slide that's coming up. Uh, we also recently created the Lacey Impact Fund, uh, which is uh, the first of our funds, and we now have two, uh, that is really focused on helping give our companies the capital that they need to grow. 
Uh, it's a very small fund now, it's $5 million, uh, but we're hoping that uh, it will grow over the next several years. We've made eight investments in the last two years, and those investments range between $100,000 and $500,000 in size. So um, here are just a couple of examples of some of the companies uh, that have participated in our programs through Unlocking Innovation. Uh, South LA is a company that participate, or I'm sorry, South LA Cafe is a company that participated in our Founders Business Accelerator program, uh, which is supported by the city of LA through the Economic and Workforce Development Department. Uh, and we helped South LA pivot uh, during uh, the COVID crisis. Uh, and it was really focused on helping them uh, help their community. And um, we helped them um, uh, create meals to uh, uh, serve their, their local community through their city council office and um, through delivering meals to uh, senior citizens in need. Uh, Ampere is a hybrid electric plane company that uh, Lacey helped um, support. And they were recently um, acquired by Surfair for $100 million in stock. Uh, Charger Help uh, is an EV charger maintenance company uh, that just raised a $2.75 million round. And what's really great about Charger Help is that the two founders participated in a workforce development program two years ago that Lacey created uh, with the help of the state of California. And then these uh, two women um, went out, worked for another EV charging company, developed their skills, and then decided to start their own business. So within two years, they went from never having participated in EV charging maintenance to starting their own business and having a very successful raise. Uh, and then there's uh, Envoy, which is a uh, car share, EV car sharing company uh, that has participated in two of Lacey's community pilot uh, car sharing programs in low income communities. Uh, in this case, Pacoima and San Pedro. Uh, Envoy also just raised an $11 million Series A round. So we're very proud of uh, the progress that our companies have made just uh, in the last year, despite all the challenges and headwinds. Uh, Lacey also recently just released a green jobs report uh, in partnership with the California Workforce Development Board and the City of Los Angeles Workforce Development Board. And um, what this report found was that um, we have the potential to create over 600,000 green jobs countywide by 2050. Uh, it's very ambitious, yet we believe that uh, these goals are achievable. And uh, I, I'm happy to share this proposal, or I'm sorry, this proposal. <laughs> I'm happy to share this presentation with everyone uh, afterwards, and you can uh, find the link to the green jobs report so you can see it yourself. Um, and then Lacey is also uh, playing a role as a catalyst nationwide to help um, bring in more funding for some of our transportation electrification priorities. So last year in April of 2020, uh, Lacey and the Transportation Electrification Partnership submitted a $150 billion proposal to Congress to help support the economic recovery through the electrification of transportation. Uh, and this proposal outlines uh, some strategies for some of those investments. As you can see here, um, you know, we, we, we were aiming high because we thought that this, um, this plan should be uh, scaled to a $3 trillion uh, stimulus package. And at that time, uh, that seemed unrealistic in Congress. Uh, but now with uh, the new administration, um, some of the goals that we set forth in this plan uh, for federal investment have actually been surpassed by uh, the Biden infrastructure plan. Uh, HRNA estimates that uh, this plan would create over 2.3 million jobs nationwide, uh, with 370,000 of those jobs just in California alone. We've assembled a national coalition of over 100 organizations that have signed on to support this plan. And we're currently working with um, the Biden administration and members of Congress on key congressional committees to um, attach some of our goals to some of the 
legislation that's going to be used to implement the president's uh, infrastructure plan. And some of um, this will also go through the normal annual appropriations process. Here's just a quick snapshot of the president's $2 trillion infrastructure plan. And some people think it, it, it could actually uh, go higher than this. Um, we're very excited by the commitment to the electrification of transportation and um, making the United States a global leader in the development of electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Um, we're also very excited about the potential impact on public transit uh, and on modernizing some of our uh, bridges, highways, and roads. It's also going to be uh, incredibly important for some of the workforce development uh, that we are going to need in order to um, you know, fully realize our electrification goals. And then uh, I won't go through this too much, but I, I just um, I just caught the tail end of uh, Christine's presentation, and uh, she uh, talked about the recent study that was conducted by the LADWP and the National Renewable Energy Lab. And I'll just give you a real high-level overview. Um, the, the report found that LA is capable of achieving 98% clean energy by 2030, and perhaps 100% by 2035. Uh, you know, essentially, it, it's you know, it's not very uh, difficult, you know, to understand what their recommendations were. We need to build solar farms. We need to build a lot of wind turbines and batteries as fast as possible. We need to get more residential solar on rooftops and and commercial residential buildings. Um, we need to get more electric vehicles in people's garages, and uh, we need to switch out people's homes to uh, electric heat pumps. We also need to invest in energy efficiency and demand response programs. And uh, this report found that if in this best case scenario, most aggressive scenario, that the total cost of this would be about $86 billion. Okay, so I wanted to uh, just close on a very hopeful note. And that is uh, just last week, California, the, the California grid um, was running on 86% renewable energy, uh, which is pretty astounding uh, for the fifth largest economy in the world. And uh, it, it you know, gives me a sense of hope that we really can uh, achieve all of our goals, even though this is just for a few hours. Um, you know, I think that with the proper investments and the proper public policy guidance, um, and regulatory guidance, um, California really can achieve a lot of its renewable energy and, and climate action goals. And then I just uh, also wanted to highlight a, uh, a, a great resource for those of you who are interested in learning more about the LA innovation ecosystem. Uh, this GIS map uh, is at represent.la and uh, you can uh, find out where all the incubators and accelerators and venture capitalists and other um, key players or stakeholders within the innovation ecosystem can be found here in LA. So I will stop there. Yeah. Nice, Michael. Uh, I think uh, the time is running. Uh, it's really an interesting uh, presentation, Michael. Thanks uh, for the info. And uh, looking forward to to dig deeper into it uh, later on. But uh, right now, we I, I have to hurry to to keep the time schedule. So uh, just uh, one question: If uh, some in the participants uh, have a question, then we can uh, have it now. Or, but if it not, if not, uh, Michael, I will just say really uh, many thanks to you for the presentation. <coughs> And, uh, and now we will go over to, uh, I'll just try to take control. Uh, yes, we'll go to um, Michael. Thank you to you. And now we're going to Stephen Chung. And uh, Stephen, I hope you will uh, make your own presentation because that's a long rest, list of uh, uh, yeah uh, tasks you have been doing. But right now you are the president of the World Trade Center uh, at Los Angeles. Uh, and chief operating officer at your county economy. So will you take uh, control of the presentation 
and uh, then uh, take the stage. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much, Kurt. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, hello to the LA audience as well. Uh, I was talking to uh, Thomas Reeves, and uh, my job, I think, here is I, I knew that uh, between Nina, Christine, and Mike, they'll cover most of everything that needs to be done. So I'm just going to enhance and emphasize on some of the opportunities that they have uh, identified already. Uh, again, my name is Stephen Chung. I work at the World Trade Center Los Angeles, which is a nonprofit organization focused on helping foreign companies open up their operations here in Los Angeles region. Um, and I also work at the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, focused on economic development and building the ecosystem so we can have a vibrant economy and provide opportunities for uh, our most vulnerable populations here in um, the Los Angeles region. With that said, we see that uh, sustainability and the clean tech future is going to be our way of recovering from this devastating um, a pandemic uh, when it comes to the economic impact. As Mike, as Nina, and as um, uh, Christine have mentioned already, there are a lot of great opportunities. So what I'm going to do is just uh, focus a little bit on um, the foreign companies that are here and what that means to all of us. Um, so first, uh, you'll see that uh, I think um, Nina addressed this already, but there are a number of foreign companies uh, already located in California and they're quite successful. And if you look um, in, in throughout California, we have over 18,000 of these foreign owned establishments located in California. And most of them are actually in Southern California and you can see the size of us. Uh, specifically in Los Angeles County, uh, there's about 5,000 foreign owned establishments that have been doing quite well. Um, I know the, the print is going to be a bit small on your screen, but I'll be happy to share the, the entire report with you. Uh, based on the breakdown, um, we have uh, Japan, United Kingdom, France, Canada, Germany, Switzerland, Ireland, China, Sweden, and Taiwan as our top 10 foreign investor uh, throughout California, and that's replicated um, in other regions as well and very similar with the portfolio. And their impact is significant. Um, these foreign establishments, once they're here, and uh, Christine mentioned it, they become a part of our, our fabric, uh, our, our family here. So people don't know the difference. You know, for example, um, uh, Christine was mentioning uh, BYD, but I'll give you another example of Sony. Uh, you know, years and years ago when they first came in, uh, everybody was very uh, alarmed that uh, a Japanese company is going to be taking over our movie industry. And uh, a few years ago, if you remember, uh, someone was mentioning that their, their emails might be hacked and uh, Americans were outraged that you know they, the, that foreign countries would hack an American company. So really quickly, people and, and incorporate these foreign companies as our own. And because of that, they're able to contribute heavily to our economy. And that's why uh, Los Angeles has spent so much time and so much effort to continue to make sure um, uh, international companies uh, that are coming from all over the world are successful here because they become a, a huge component of what we do. Another part of um, what... Uh, Forward a little bit. Um, sorry. Another part of uh, our, our economy also, um, and uh, as Nina and, and Christine mentioned before, uh, is our international trade community as well. And Los Angeles is the number one customs district with over $430 billion in two-way trade with the rest of the world. And we're able to do this because, um, as Christine mentioned, we have the uh, top container ports in North America with the Port of Los Angeles. And right next to us is Port of Long Beach, um, which is the second uh, busiest container port in, in North America. Combined together, they're the ninth busiest port complex in the world, controlling about 43% of ocean-going cargo coming into the United States. Uh, also add to that, um, LIA access uh, uh, was mentioning uh, mentioned previously it's the third busiest airport in the world with over 88 million passengers coming into Los Angeles every single year don't forget that also means there are a lot of uh, cargo capacity under uh, in the belly of the plane under the passengers uh, of course there are cargo cargo planes as well we uh, transfer about a hundred billion dollars worth of goods coming in and out of this region every single year from the airport so combined together you can see the power be behind that um, I want to highlight that because I think uh, it's one thing to talk about um, just just basically port operation or airport operation but when you put it in context you can see basically the the uh this region los angeles alone controls so much of the goods that come in and out of um, not only for california but also the rest of um, the united states because we only consume about 50 percent of those goods that are here the rest of them are railed or trucked to the rest of the united states um, so we actually have a huge influence over the rest of the united states as well I want to uh, highlight a couple other things as well. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to try to present another 
uh, element that uh, some of the folks were mentioning as well. Now uh, go back on script afterwards. We mentioned a lot about um, the um, uh, electric vehicle uh, uh, system that we have here, the ecosystem that's been here. Um, LADC did a report uh, last year that was released about the e ecosystem in terms of what the, the ele uh, electric vehicle, not only when it comes to manufacturing, again, as Christine was mentioning, we have a, a number of headquarters, whether it's Fisker, whether it's Zero Lab, whether it's Tesla, it's all throughout California. And because of that, we've been seeing a growth of the uh, 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 ancillary supportive systems, whether it's batteries, charging station, fast charging station. We have uh, electric bus manufacturers. When BYD opened their North American headquarters in Los Angeles, it attracted other competitors to come here. So Proterra, New Flyer, and other electric bus manufacturers are also here competing for those uh, contracts as well. So uh, as we're, we're growing, California can continue to lead the way because we've invested in the infrastructure back way early in the 90s when everybody's still kind of just exploring. We've already move forward with it. So the entire ecosystem is here, and that's why we're able to attract uh, additional international companies that are thriving here. Um, a couple of other things to, to just address some of the other issues that were raised before. Uh, I want to highlight that in 2019, this is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. There was a question about the biomass and bio waste. It's only 0.2% of the energy mix when it comes to the total mix, but you can see the green power, the green LA plan eventually will get us to 100% renewable. Um, and, and as Mike was mentioning already, we're well on our way. And uh, another thing about water reclama uh, 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 water waste as well, it's uh, hard to track, you know, how much water is, you know, kind of wasted. Uh, so there was an estimate uh, in 2019 that um, in one month alone, in February of 2019, over 18 trillion gallons of um, water was wasted throughout California because we're, we don't have the system to capture the rain. And the Los Angeles, as Nina mentioned, the mayor has been very aggressive about making sure that we have the ability to, to recapture that water and to be able to reuse it. And so if you look at the, and I'll send this link in, in the chat later on, for yeah. the Department of Sanitation, um, they have a capacity of uh, uh, treating about 580 million gallons of water every single day through the treatment plan. And by the way, this is just for the city of Los Angeles. Don't forget there are 88 different cities in the county of Los Angeles with over 100 incorporated areas. So again, I want to reemphasize the size. When people think of Los Angeles, they keep on thinking it's a city. It's like, okay, should I consider Los Angeles or should I consider Phoenix? Well, let me uh, <laughs> kind of clarify that a little bit because, um, and I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to stop sharing this screen and just go yep. back. Um, this the size of this market is a lot larger than than just any other city. You know, the Los Angeles city alone is the second largest city in the nation with over four million uh, people living here. The Los Angeles County region is now talking about 10.2 million residents. If you talk about the greater Los Angeles region, the five county areas that really comprise of the Los Angeles region, we're talking about 18.7 million people. Um, Christine also mentioned uh, and Nina mentioned before that our, our uh, collective GDP is over a trillion dollars. So when you're entering this market, you really have to have um, a, a, a nation strategy rather than a city strategy because it's such a large uh, area and the opportunities are great. I'm going to highlight a couple other uh, potential that uh, the previous speakers have mentioned, specifically including um, the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games, the Super Bowl that's going to be here next year, the FIFA World Cup uh, uh, in 2026. Also, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game will be here in Los Angeles. Uh, the Major League uh, Soccer Game will be here and All-Star Game will be here in Los Angeles. So we're going to be the sports entertainment capital of the United States um, for the next 10 years. And with that, there are a lot of infrastructure development projects that need to be done. Done. But Nina also mentioned that most of the major stadiums are already built. But right now, what we're hearing is the Olympic Committee and uh, the International Olympic Committee, as well as the FIFA World Cup uh, Committee, will be going to the stadiums and asking them, what are you doing for sustainability? How are you going to be able to capture your water? What about your waste? What are you going to do about this? So these become huge, huge and billions and billions of dollars of opportunities for contractors. And um, in Los Angeles, the beauty is that we know that we don't have the solution for everything. And that's why 
right. Nina's absolutely right. We are very welcoming um, of our international partners. Uh, in fact, the, the reason why we're so successful is because we are made up of these international partners from around the world that have helped us uh, get to this point. So as we're looking in the future, this is exactly what we're looking for. Um, the, the creative solutions from around the world, uh, we have the contracts, <laughs> we have the opportunities. Come and uh, secure a piece of that and help us basically get to the sustainable and renewable future that we're looking for. Um, there are a lot of uh, other challenges as well that we haven't even start to describe, but we're talking about the zero, sorry, the, the last mile solution. Um, as many people know that Los Angeles is also, with all the good comes some of the bad as well. We have um, one of the worst uh, traffic conditions in, in the United States, if not the world. Uh, we've been uh, working really hard to basically overcome some of those challenges. And in 2018, the County of Los Angeles passed a new tax measure um, that will basically dedicate about 120 to 140 billion dollars dedicated to transportation projects. And with that, there's going to be a lot of demand for sustainable solutions uh, uh, associated with those projects as well. So you can see just from this presentation for our international audience that there are a lot of great um, opportunities, whether it's for from an emission standpoint, from a water rec reclamation standpoint, from a transportation standpoint, and these um, other companies from around the world are already here providing those solutions and really helping uh, our ecosystem grow. But at the same time, what happens here, especially in Los Angeles City is now influencing other cities around um, the entire region. So again, with the 87 other cities, uh, Los Angeles oftentimes is a leader uh, for these uh, environmental sustainability plan. It gets adopted by the 88 other cities, then it spread to California, then it spreads to the rest of the United States and then the rest of the world as well. So this is really the global market. And that's why uh, as Nina mentioned again, we're, the, uh, we're home to the world's third largest consular core with over 100 countries represented here. And these countries have their government offices here for a reason, so they can understand what's happening here, so they can bring back those technologies and those companies to their own countries as well. So by locating in Los Angeles or doing their operation in Los Angeles, you're actually reaching the rest of the world. So I, I know that we only have three minutes, so I'll stop yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay, Steve. It's interesting, actually. And, uh, and I would like to go to... Uh, to our last uh, slide, and uh, I'll just thank you, Stephen Chung, because you have been so, uh, making such an interesting presentation, and it's a huge market. Actually, you have to understand uh, that lots of possibilities, but actually, I would like to hear if some has some questions, but I have one, and uh, that's uh, all these uh, foreigners that are participating in the, the development in, uh, in LA. Uh, is it easy to, uh, to start a company? In, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, Stephen, can you? Uh, yeah, I think. Oh, sorry, I was trying to uh, type in some of the links so they're there. Uh, okay, I, yeah, I how know, easy I is it? To, so, so uh, how easy is it to start a business in Los Angeles? Uh, well, you know, there there are um, um, it's relative. <laughs> Look, you know, the, I think Los Angeles and California sometimes have a bad reputation of basically being complex to do business, but it's about finding the right partners with uh, the mayor's office, uh, with Nina and Christine's office. They have a great support system there, and we work very closely with the World Trade Center and LADC with the mayor's office to ensure that these international companies are getting all the resources that they need. I think the reason why it's so complex is because, again, folks come here thinking that they're going to be reaching a small city when they see that they're actually reaching 18.7 million people. So that's why their approach is different, and that's why it becomes complex for them is because their strategy was really targeted towards the city. So if they uh, did their homework, and we have plenty of resources, as you can see between the, the speakers that are already here, um, we can provide you with the right information so you can do the proper homework by the time you enter Los Angeles, it will be less daunting. And there are a lot of additional resources and people ready and willing to help. Yeah. If you don't mind, um, yeah. can I just okay. add one thing? And the last slide that I uh, showed during my presentation um, showed what the LA innovation ecosystem looks like. And so I would just say that, yes, there are certainly challenges to starting a new business or bringing a business here to uh, the LA region. But I really do believe that there is an incredible, incredibly robust um, support system for startups here. Uh, and I won't go into great detail about it, but um, there really are a lot of organizations 
that are focused on helping startups thrive and grow and give them the resources that they need and help them you know enter markets and and develop their markets so i just want to say that it is challenging but there is you know a support system here that i think is unrivaled in just about anywhere except maybe silicon valley yeah but i actually i i've, I've told that uh, it's quite easy to 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 get uh, a company and a registration and so and i think it's it's just a huge part of uh, making collaboration with uh, san francisco la and all the the other uh, actors in, uh, in 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 la so actually that's uh, that's one of the the main focuses that is uh, how to to join and collaborate but you need to be actually it's established at as a company if you want to take the big ride with uh, with the collaboration and actually i i have I haven't got many questions on my raised hand but i can see there's a, a ongoing dialogue on the chat and uh, thank you very much for that and stephen uh, thank for the the last uh, uh, post as you have been uh, doing and actually the time is running again and uh, we need to uh, to 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 quit uh, sharp at uh, at six o'clock in uh, danish time and uh, actually i've been uh, counting so it would be nine o'clock in la i think so in the morning so uh, a last question we can uh, we can post to uh, to the wonderful people from uh, 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 from LA, so we we'll, we we'll look forward to meet you later on in uh, the uh, in the the, the the October month, and when we are meeting on li live. And uh, actually, I would like to uh, thank you all for for taking part in this uh, presentation, and then uh, just uh, say see you later. And uh, I think there's lots of uh, participants from Denmark that have uh, a lot of questions that we can pose when we meet you uh, at the stage in uh, in LA. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thank you, you to all you uh, wonderful presentators. presentators. So uh, uh, I hope you will have a wonderful morning and a wonderful evening in Denmark. And uh, see you all later. And remember, we have some uh, more webinars that's coming up. And uh, the next one is uh, the 29th of April when we are going to uh, talk about public public utility without equal in the US. So uh, everybody, thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a nice day. See you later.